number 10 spot today, we have the man who survived two atomic If you went to history class in high school, then you probably will remember hearing about the two atomic that the US dropped on the two Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. 90,000 people were killed due to the blasts and the radiation. But in 2009, the Japanese government confirmed that a man was in both of these cities during their and he survived both of them. Come again? Yes, a man named Tajumu Yamaguchi was on a business trip in Hiroshima on August 6th when he looked up at the sky and saw the B-29 and it dropped two parachutes. Before he knew it, he saw a great flash in the sky and he was blasted by the impact. By August 9, he was back home in Nagasaki recovering from the incident, only to endure it again. Even though you would probably think that he might not have lived long due to the radiation exposure, he actually lived to 93 and passed away in 2010. That's an insane story that makes you think out of 90,000 deaths, this man survived. He must have had a higher purpose. Number 9. Stephen Hawking Time is relative and fascinating and all that confusing stuff. There's so many components of our universe that we still don't even understand. James Webb is out here making people turn to atheists all of a sudden. The universe is bigger than we all think, yet somehow it still gives us these once in a lifetime coincidences. Or as I say, <laughs> Stephen Hawking's death occurred on Einstein's 139th birthday, which is also Galileo's 300th death day, and also Pi Day. This was March 14th. My dad has the same birthday as Daniel Radcliffe, and they're both wizards, so I don't know. Just saying. These birthday coincidences are getting out of hand. Coincidences, coincidences, coincidences. There it is, he's got it. Number eight, atomic survivor. On August 6th and 9th, 1945, the United States detonated two nuclear explosives over the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. This, of course, was devastating. The results in this reaction, the blast and the radiation they both caused, took the lives of nearly 90,000 people. It was horrible. But in 2009, the Japanese government confirms that there was at least one man who was in each city on both both days of the reactions, and he lived to tell the tale. On August 6th, Satamu Yamaguchi was in Hiroshima on a business trip. As I was walking alone, I heard the sound of a plane, just one, he told a British newspaper. I looked up into the sky and I saw the B-29 and it dropped two parachutes. I was looking up into the sky at them and suddenly it was like a flash of magnesium, a great flash in the sky, and I was blown over just like that. And by August 9th, he had returned home to Nagasaki only to experience the trauma for a second time. Despite the double radiation exposure, Yamaguchi lived to be 93 years old, which is incredible. He sadly passed away from stomach cancer. Number seven, Julianne Kopka. Miss Julianne has a two for one when it comes to survival stories. I had to include it. Her story starts out on Christmas Eve, a lovely day, 1971, when she was just a teenager and she was on Lanza Flight 508. Now the plane was struck by lightning, which is an actual nightmare situation that I didn't know could happen. And this led to the plane starting to disintegrate midair. I don't even, yeah. It was all bad. In what felt like the blink of an eye for Julianne, she found herself still strapped to her seat two miles above the Peruvian rainforest. She was injured, of course, full of bruises, a broken collarbone, but she was alive after she landed. And in fact, she was the only person who had been on the flight that was still alive. Just fell out of a plane and lived to tell. That is crazy. That is bad insane. But it's like you're out of the fire into the frying pan at this point, right? Now you're in the wilderness all alone with no food. Just, you know, a little bit of candy, if anything, from the plane. Julianne had found a small stream which she began to wade in downstream. She traveled along it and the insects in the jungle were eating her alive and sorry this next part is gross but maggots had infected her arm. It was like bad, worse, even worse. Now we're flowing down a river and maggots are eating me. This is incredible. Julianne ended up coming across a sort of encampment where she found a few supplies and she was so smart and was able to give herself a little bit of first aid which included pouring gasoline on the infected arm which then led to all the you know disgusting bugs and maggots leaving it because they're like hey I'm not a fan of gasoline. Lunch is over. See you later. And then just a few hours later, a few lumber workers found her and they gave her more first aid treatment and took her to an area that was more populated where she was then airlifted for medical treatment. Now in 2000, her story was told through the documentary titled Wings of Hope, which was directed by Werner Herzog, who particularly took interest in the story because one, it's obviously 
absolutely incredible as I was just explaining it. I read this and I'm like, it's crazy. But two, Werner Herzog also had a seat booked on that flight and he would have been on that same flight if it wasn't for a last minute change of plans. I can't even, that should be number one, really. Number six, Comet family. Okay, this one's good. The odds of being hit or killed by a meteor are one in two million or something like that, right? It's crazy. But even so, back in 1954, residents in Talladega County, Alabama, noticed a ball of fire heading towards the earth. Now, back then, we didn't have Twitter, right? We couldn't warn anybody that a meteor was possibly gonna hit us. We also really didn't know if it was gonna hit or not or how big it was, so it was alarming. Especially for Anne Elizabeth Hodges, who got hit by said space rock. Yeah, she only got grazed, but with these odds, it's still possible, wild. Now cut to recent history, the Comet family in France. Their house was hit by a meteor. I'll say that again. The Comet family was hit by a you get it, there we go. As somebody with the last name McWaters, I'm a little worried that I might drown now. I don't know, last names seem to be a little bit of a tip off, it seems. And number five, World Cup. An episode from The Simpsons back in 1997 called The Cartridge Family shows Mexico and Portugal going head to head in football. Like, you know, like soccer football, not like, you know, football, football, you get it. Springfield residents are told to go see this match to determine which nation is the greatest on earth, Mexico or Portugal. So when the 2018 World Cup then rolled around much later, rolled around, pun intended, fans were excited that this was now coming true, but at the same time had a laugh determining that Ronaldo must have missed that penalty intentionally so that the prediction would come true. That's like the theory now that Ronaldo missed to make the Simpsons correct. A lot of theories for that one, it's always fun. But recently it's been announced that Qatar will host a tournament in November and December 2022, rather than usual June, July dates. Another World Cup, another chance for the Simpsons to add another prediction to their already impressive list. That's a creepy show. I have another Simpsons one coming up, but we'll see. Number four, Mars Life. Eh, we're back, there it is. There's the next Simpson one, that, that fast, there we go. Let me ask you lovely people a question. If you could go to Mars right now with like three of your friends, would you do it? Keep in mind, it's really boring. And unless you're a astronaut botanist like Matt Damon, you'll probably have a rough go. But in the future, would you do it? I would, I'd go. I'd go with like one person, you know? Force too many, that's too much. Going to Mars might be as simple as going to the mall. Apparently, the Simpsons have an episode where they show a family visit to the big red planet come 2051. But honestly, I feel like we're gonna get there a lot sooner. SpaceX is already planning to send people out there. It's a quick, you know, nine month trip, so make sure your phone's charged. But it's actually more beneficial for the team to travel during these peak times, in the 2030s and in the 2050s. Because during these years, trips to the planet will be shorter and they'll coincide with periods of the solar maximum. So while this one may or may not come true in 2022, well, let me tell you, it's right around the corner, or maybe in 2050. Who knows? Number three, Titanic inspection card. This inspection card once belonged to a woman named Marion Meanwell. And you're probably thinking, eh, what could possibly be worrisome or, you know, creepy about an inspection card? Well, it shows how Marion was not intended to be on the Titanic that fateful day, but by some turn of events, she unfortunately found herself as one of the passengers. The card shows that she was originally meant to be traveling on a ship called the Majestic, and for some reason, the trip she originally had planned was delayed, and now she instead was assigned to the ill-fated Titanic. The eerie part is you can see See the word majestic was crossed out on her card, which then shows us the change in plans. If only people were able to see what was about to strike and they could have somehow warned her. That's the creepy thing about these coincidences. Sometimes they're just bad, you know? You could fall out of a plane and have maggots all over you and survive, or you could go from one cursed ship to another. Ah, number two, Edgar Allan Poe. Okay, this is a story that actually convinced me that Edgar Allan Poe is for real a time traveler, so buckle up, grab a soda. Because two separate stories that he wrote both turned out to be exceptionally true and real, but not until after they had been written. Yeah, it's a good one. Firstly, Poe's only completed novel was published in 1838, and it tells the tale of mutiny on a whaling ship lost at sea. These men on a ship realize that they're doomed and need to resort to extreme measures in order to stay alive. So they begin drawing straws to see who they're going to sacrifice to save food. A boy named Richard Parker drew the shortest straw and therefore became the next meal. Dark, let's move on. Let's fast forward to 46 years now to 1884, and in real life also, I might add. There are now four men who have been set adrift after the sinking of a yacht. These men found themselves in a similar predicament to the novels, and I kid you not, they ended up taking the same route and elected to sacrifice a cabin boy. A cabin boy also named Richard Parker. Odd, right? Okay. Cut to 1840, Poe penned the gruesome story, The Businessman, in which the narrator suffers a traumatic head injury in his youth, and then later a violent life follows. The weird thing about this story is that Edgar Allan Poe fully understood, or so it seemed, frontal lobe injury. Now this was long before it was ever even studied or looked at, right? This 
This type of study didn't arrive until 1848. An actual neurologist, Eric Altschuler, recently wrote how there's a dozen symptoms and he knew every single one. It's so exact and it's so weird, it's like he had a time machine, end quote. Yeah, it's almost like he had a time machine. Did he? And finally, number one, Simpsons dome in real life. Yep, yeah, this one's gonna hit home, let's do it. This one's gonna hit dome. That didn't work. For this one, we're looking at the Simpsons movie, which still holds up. That's a fun time. But even over the pandemic, I saw personal domes come to life, right? It was so weird. Restaurants were making these like weird tents on sidewalks just to stay in business. But an even bigger idea came long before this. Back in the 70s, there were talks about putting a dome over Manhattan, this massive dome over Midtown that regulates weather and pollution, all that good stuff. Now, if that had been built, imagine what we would have done with it during the initial breakout during this pandemic. It would have been madness. And then in 2010, later on, the city called Eco City 2020 was planned out. It was supposed to be built in Siberia. It was announced in 2014 officially, this climate controlled, you know, domed city, four and a half square kilometers, all that good stuff. But since 2016, the project lost the funding. What do you guys think? Should we bring back domes and just, you know, have a, a little personal bubble everywhere we go? Just lose the umbrella and live in a big glass ball forever over our city? I'd do it, that'd be kinda nice. Be like living in a Coca-Cola mist zone your entire life, just kinda like, ooh, this is nice. Starting off this countdown, we have the 4th of July. The 4th of July is a big celebration in America. The holiday marks the signing of the Declaration of Independence. But did you know that a lot of US figures have died on July 4th? In fact, three of the first five US presidents died on this date two within hours of each other. John Adams and Thomas Jefferson both died on July 4th, 1826. The fifth president, James Monroe, exactly five years later passed away as well. Seems to be a deadly date for presidents. Like, what are the odds? Coming up in our ninth spot today is more of a historical pop culture moment that scientists just wouldn't be able to explain. The discovery of the twins named Jim, a personal favorite of mine. You may or may not have heard of this story before, but personally, I think it's fascinating. In 1979, a set of twins that were separated at birth reunited at the age of 39. When they met up, they discovered some pretty crazy coincidences. Both of the boys had adoptive parents that named them Jim. Both of the boys loved math and carpentry, and both pursued a career in security. But the coincidences don't end here. Here's where you start thinking, there must be something else going on that we don't understand. Are you ready? Both boys married women named Linda. Both boys then divorced their Lindas, and both remarried women named Betty. What? <laughs> Shivers. <laughs> but it doesn't end here. They both had children and named them James Allen. <sighs> Mind blown. Apps like total shivers right now. <laughs> In our eighth spot today, we have the ship survivor. Imagine being on the Titanic and surviving that horrific accident. Then imagine being in another ship that ended up sinking and surviving that, and then being in a ship collision after that. That's definitely enough to make me never board another ship again and perhaps also have PTSD whenever I see water. That was the case for Violet Jessup, who was a stewardess aboard the RMS Titanic in 1912. She managed to abort a lifeboat after being handed a baby to look after. Years later, she was aboard its sister ship, HMHS Britannic, in 1916, when it had sunk. She actually almost died in this sinking as she was on a lifeboat that got sucked under by the propellers, but she jumped out in time. She was also aboard the RMBS Olympic in 1911 when it collided with the British warship. So to say that she lived quite the life would be an understatement. She actually died of old age in 1971. In our seventh spot today, we have the arguably fateful death of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. I say arguably because, well, just you wait and you decide. Yet another story that I hope you learned in history class, the assassination of Franz Ferdinand and the beginning of World War II. You may have learned that he died after an attack on his car, but you may not know that the bomb that was meant for his car actually hit the car behind him and the attempt failed and Ferdinand was able to get away unscathed. The assassins, we can imagine, were probably feeling hangry, due, of course, to this failed attempt and most likely hunger, as they then decided to stop at a nearby cafe for a sandwich. The Archduke, 
probably thankful to be alive, dashed off and continued on to safety when his driver took a wrong turn and ended up in front of the sandwich shop. The assassin saw him, shot him and his wife, and thus began the whirlwind of World War II. Makes you think that perhaps he was fated to die, or maybe he was just having a really bad luck day. <laughs> I would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. In our sixth spot today, we have the deaths of Thomas Jefferson and John Adams. In 1775, Thomas Jefferson and John Adams became good friends fast. They worked together to draft the Declaration of Independence, and they also spent time together as diplomats for the US in Europe. They had a falling out in 1801 when Jefferson became president over Adams, and they didn't reconcile until 1812. On July 4th, 1826 though, the day that America declared its independence 50 years prior, Thomas Jefferson passed away. But what's interesting is that John Adams, in another state, was on his deathbed, only to say the words, Thomas Jefferson survives. And then, he passed away. Does this mean he saw Jefferson's ghost greet him on his deathbed? They both ended up passing on the same date, and not only that, but on the date that was seemingly their historical purpose. Coincidence? I think not. In our fifth spot today, we have the saving of Robert Todd Lincoln. You may or may not know this, but Robert Todd Lincoln is famously known as the son of the former US President Abraham Lincoln. In late 1864, Robert was traveling from New York to Washington when he found himself leaning against a stopped train. When the train started moving, he fell onto the tracks, only to be saved by an actor named Edwin Booth. When he later realized that his savior was the famous actor Edwin Booth, he made sure to thank him. It wasn't until much later did Edwin learn the identity of the man he saved, as he was the son of the president whom was shot by Edwin's brother, John Wilkes Booth. That's too weird of a coincidence for me. I guess perhaps if Lincoln's son had died, maybe Lincoln himself wouldn't have been where he was on that fateful day that he passed. In our fourth spot today, we have another weird coincidence revolving around Robert Lincoln. The death of not one, not two, but three American presidents occurred right in front of him. Highly sus, Robert. The first was of course his own father's assassination, President Abraham Lincoln. After his death, Robert and his mother moved to Chicago where he planted roots, got married, had children, and created his law practice. He continued to work in politics as the Secretary of War under the presidency of President James A. Garfield in 1881. But while at a railroad station in Washington with Robert and a few others, Garfield was assassinated. Then in 1901, Robert was invited to attend a Pan-American exposition in Buffalo by President William McKinley, only to witness his assassination. Apparently Robert has been quoted as saying that there was a certain fatality about the presidential function when I am present. Is there Robert? Or did you perhaps concoct the death of your father with your savior Edwin Booth and his brother John, and then perhaps all these other incidences after? In our third spot today, we have the Comet family. It is said that your odds of being killed by a comet is one in 1,600,000, so not very high. You're more likely to be hit by lightning, and even that is one in 500,000. And so of course, on top of these odds, no one would expect that a comet would hit the home of a French family named can you guess? Comet, or commit. I love the French. <laughs> Comet, what are the odds? Probably in the trillions. Thankfully, nobody in the family was hurt and they now have their very own space rock as a souvenir. Life is so funny and weird. In our number two spot, we have the Civil War House. In 1861, when the Civil War broke out with the first battle of Bull Run, it at some point made its way through the garden of Wilmer McLean in Virginia. After the mass devastation, Wilmer decided to leave his home and he moved to a new place, Appomattox, Virginia. But of course, the war followed him there and actually came to a close when Robert E. Lee surrendered to Ulysses S. Grant at the Appomattox Courthouse, just only steps away from McLean's new property. Poor guy, he just wanted to live a peaceful, war-free life. Is that too much to ask for? Or perhaps he's psychic and he knew that peace would happen in this particular town. Hmm, who knows, but interesting coincidence. Finally, in our number one spot today, we have the very interesting birth and death of Mark Twain. Mark Twain was born on November 30th, 1835 in Florida, Missouri, the day that a very special comet was in the sky, Halley's Comet. 
The Halley's Comet returns to the Earth's vicinity approximately 75 years, give or take a bit, due to the gravitational pull of the planets that it passes. About 74 years later, Mark Twain made a prediction that his death would coincide with the comet's next appearance, just like his birth. He was known to have said that, it will be the greatest disappointment of my life if I don't go out with Halley's Comet. The Almighty has said, no doubt. Now here are two unaccountable freaks. They came in together, they must go out together. And he was right. He ended up dying April 21st, 1910, the day after Halley's Comet made its return. It was also a very special day as it was the first time the comet was captured on camera. Pretty awesome if I do say so myself. Number 10, twins named Jim. Okay, we'll kick this part two off on a lighter note. This one gets a little dark, so we'll ease our way in, you know? The twins named Jim. Okay, that sounds like a 2026 comedy hit already. Back in 1979, a set of twins were reunited when they were 39 years old at the time. This was, of course, a big moment in their lives. For 37 years, they barely knew of each other's existence. Then when they finally met, the long-lost twins had more in common than they could have ever thought. For starters, both had been named Jim. I spoiled that in the fun title earlier, but their adoptive parents both named the lads Jim. That's insane. Jim? Like of all names? Really? And both Jims just happened to love math and carpentry. Both also had jobs and security. And both also had ex-wives named Linda. And they both since married a woman named Betty. This is incredible. This isn't like, what? Imagine meeting another you and he's like, oh yeah, I also love knitting and Autobots. What are the odds? No, that's too eerie. You're an alien clone. Something's afoot here. Get out of here. Not just meeting a long lost twin at 40. No way. In our ninth spot, we have Barbary Shore. Barbary Shore is a novel written by Norman Mailer. It's about a character who rents a room in a Brooklyn boarding house in order to write a novel. Then a minor character is introduced and it's his neighbor who turns out to be a Russian spy. Well, after the novel was finished, Mailer's neighbor was arrested for being a Russian spy and hiding out in his apartment just like in the book he wrote. And he had no prior knowledge of his neighbor. Now that's freaky. In our eighth spot, we have The Omen. The Omen is a 1976 horror movie that caused a number of real life tragedies. As a result, it's been called a real life horror movie or a cursed one. A number of the cast members got into horrific accidents. For example, special effects consultant John Richardson got into a crash and his assistant, Liz Moore, was cut in half during an accident, similar to the death of a character in the actual film. That's not all. The screenwriter and executive producer were both on different planes that got struck by lightning on different occasions. It's just wild how so many cast and crew members experienced tragedy after working on the film. Is this a coincidence or is the film actually cursed? In our seventh spot, we have William Shakespeare. More like William Shookspeare, because I was shook after hearing this. So Psalm 46 in the book of Psalm reads, here was I like a psalm. The freaky part is that this is an anagram for William Shakespeare, arranged letters and it spells his name. But wait, it gets weirder. The 46th word in Psalm 46 in the King James Bible is shake, and the 46th word from the end is spear. And how old was William Shakespeare when the King James Bible was first completed? He was 46 years old. So someone explain this to me, please go ahead. Try and explain this. Coming in at number six, we have the Jim twins. In 1940, a set of twins were put up for adoption when they were only three weeks old. They both ended up getting adopted by different parents, so they got separated. They were raised differently. However, both lived near identical lives. First off, we got their names. Both adoptive parents named their son James, but the boys wanted to be called Jim. So you got Jim Lewis and Jim Springer. Keep in mind, they lived separately and had no contact with each other. Gets weirder. Both Jims had a dog. They both named the dog the same. They named it Toy. In school, they both enjoyed math and carpentry, but had trouble with spelling. Both Jims went on to marry a woman named Linda. Then they both ended up divorcing Linda, and then they married again. This time, they both married a woman named Betty. So you're telling me that they both married someone with the same name, not once, but twice? 
What are the odds? Later on in life, both of them had a son. They both named their sons James Allen. They both drove the same car in the same color and both were chain smokers. In 1979, both the Jims actually met each other and realized just how similar they were. Like, this is wild. They had the same habits and everything. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with My Way. My Way is a beautiful song by Frank Sinatra, but it also might be cursed. Why do I say that? Well, at least six people were killed in the Philippines between 2000 and 2010 while singing My Way. Karaoke is a pretty popular pastime in the Philippines. However, this song is now associated with bad luck there. One time a man was shot by a security guard for singing this song badly at a bar. Others were killed for hogging the microphone, and quite a few were killed for singing the song on repeat. Due to the repeated deaths, the song is actually banned from ever being sung or played in bars. In our fourth spot today, we have the license plate. World War I began after Archduke Franz Ferdinand was assassinated in his car on June 28, 1914. The car's license plate read AIII-118, which wasn't a big deal until people realized that this was the date that World War I ended. November 11th, 1918, AKA 11-11-18, just like the license plate. Now, this car was placed in a museum in Austria and it sat there for almost two decades before a British tourist noticed the significance of the license plate. So literally World War I started and ended with this car. Coming in at number three, we have Catherine and Mary Kelly. On November 28th, 1888, a woman named Catherine Eddowes was arrested after being found drunk on the streets of London. When she was taken in by the police, she gave them a fake name. She told them her name was Mary Kelly. Later, she was released. However, that night she was murdered by none other than Jack the Ripper. The freakiest part is that that same night, Jack went on to kill another woman, none other than Mary Kelly. The random fake name that Catherine gave the police, who is actually a real person and also got killed. How scary, but also how tragic. In our second spot, we have the Disney lovers. In the early 2000s, engaged couple Alex and Donna were looking through some old photos when they came across one of Donna and her siblings at Disney. While in the background of the photo, they spotted none other than Alex and his family. Alex is the boy in the stroller being pushed by his father. So not only did they go to Disney at the same time, they just so happened to be in the same spot at the same time and got it on camera. I guess that's how you know that your love was meant to be. Years later, they decided to take their kids to Disney and recreate this iconic photo. And in our number one spot today, we have the lightning strike. There is a one in 500,000 chance of being hit by lightning. There's a one in nine million chance of being struck by lightning twice. What about being struck by lightning three different times? This happened to a man named Major Walter Summerford. He was struck by lightning three different times throughout his life and survived. Not only that, but when he did pass away, his gravestone was also struck by lightning. What are the odds of that? Like, did he piss off Zeus or something? Mm -hmm. 